Hello and welcome back everybody for yet another tutorial style video. Basically what I wanted to do this game is I played against a Zerg player who really didn't play too well so I just thought I'd go through sort of what he did, analyze what his gameplay was, help him out a little bit if possible. I played this game pretty bad and I probably should have lost but at the same time I also made a couple good calls too. So yeah, you're gonna see I put down my pylon standard timing, came in for the scout you can see. He's going for his scout pretty early as well. Not so sure why he wanted the real fast scout, especially considering he's not going for an early pool with an early attack. Uh, yep. And yeah, so far everything's looking kind of normal, except, okay, what about here? Usually, unless you're doing some sort of early aggression all in, you should expand now instead of going gas first. It's just better overall. Definitely would have been better if he expanded. I threw it on the pile on there thinking he was going to expand. And now I come into his base and I see this stuff. So, you know, first thing for him though is I would definitely consider doing the expansion before doing the pool gas. Uh, but, then again, maybe he wants an aggressive play. So, that's why he would do that. But one thing that's kind of interesting here is I go to check, make sure he's not going to take this. Because I'm expecting him to expand, because that's what Zerg players do, you just expand. It's kind of the best strategy right now for Zerg is just go for that quick 3 base roach at like 9 minutes and your opponent basically just dies. <laughs> but he is actually going for a roach rush to a degree. Now he is still not expanded here, still not expanded here. This is going to tip me off for a little bit so you know I just want to mention a little few things about myself even though we're kind of looking at his gameplay. If you look at the income tab here, really low on harvest account but I'm assuming that he is cutting workers to be able to get you know roach out. Now this is not the proper build or order for a seven roach rush. Rush, the seven roach rush. So you know if he wants to do an early aggression with roaches, he should really look up the build for seven roach rush and do that. But yeah, definitely now. There's a few more units, but uh, right now it's gonna be in. He's gotta either decide if he wants to go for a one base all in, or if he wants to go for you know uh, be expand and be able to continue playing the game. But he's kind of going for like this halfway in between and it's not really the best but see here's what I mean about I had a bit of a good read is I saw that he wasn't expanding for the longest time I saw the roaches attack my pylon and that's why I have three cannons instead of just one uh, or even just two so definitely 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 very important to consider things like that at all times of course he's forced to be pushed back and right now he should just expand 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 because well obviously I've got an expansion up and you know, I'm able to hold any aggression he has right now, so really he should be taking two bases instead of one. So that's kind of a big mistake there. And, yeah, building ten more lings. I'm not sure if he wants to bust me still or what the deal is, but unless he's going to have some way to get in my base without going through the wall, he really, 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 really needs to uh, just worry about drones right now, because now he's got more than enough to survive for a little bit. Just drone up and then get units. He's now getting a spire, not a bad idea, except for the fact that he doesn't have the economy to back it. So definitely keep that in mind, you know, like if we look at the income tab, he only has 26 harvests in my 39. His economy is quite low right now. It's really not, it's a bit early getting that spire. Like really, this is the biggest thing, you know, he's really got to work on his macro uh, and, you know, work on having a better build to begin with. Just opening build. <laughs> Now this is going to be interesting. Right now we're about equal in units lost and uh, I'm going to have my army slaughtered in a little bit. <laughs> Not horribly slaughtered, but definitely slaughtered. And of course killing off the changeling because I'm just good like that. I see things on my mini map. I'm getting a lot better at map awareness. Now this is the part where I kind of get slaughtered. My units are out of position. I use the mineral lines for defense. I do the best I can to keep those roaches off me for as long as possible. But the roaches finally do get in and yeah, Protoss just, Protoss loses in a straight up fight against anything, so, <laughs> except for other Protoss. And as we can see, if we look at the income tab though, he's still really neglecting that income and that is really, really what killed him. He really should have a lot more units by now. Drones, he has to have more harvesters. He has to have more harvesters than I have to be able to really get ahead. I'm even taking a third base, a little risky, but, you know, because he only, because his economy is so weak, it actually is not going to hurt me, but if he had had a good economy, might have been at risk because I knew the mutilists were coming out, but also because I knew the mutilists were coming out, I knew I had to make a push real soon. See all these extra gateways being added on. I'm going to sit outside of his base, be ready to force steal this ramp. 
because I need to make sure that the mutilists are afraid to go and harass me because right now I cannot afford. Oh, didn't even notice that change. <laughs> I cannot afford to have. How come observers, like, your unit should automatically attack changelings when your observer sees it? <laughs> and yeah, so if we look at the upgrades now, we'll just watch this battle because there's really nothing else to do. I've got one attack and he's got absolutely nothing for attack. And if we look at the army tab, I, a relatively big command. And I do have blink, even though I don't really use it too much because I don't really have to. Uh, so. But yeah, blink forward just to make sure all my units are attacking. A little late on that, but whatever. And basically, yeah, I'm going to win the game now, but really, a lot of that was just, you know, he had a bad opening build. He didn't, he didn't build directly to do a road crush. And then he really, really, really didn't macro well enough. Uh, you know, not building all those extra harvesters really need to take a third base, because when you're Zerg, you want to have more bases than your Protoss counterpart. <laughs> so, yeah, the unit composition wasn't the big problem. Definitely, uh, Mutalists can be very good against Protoss, especially at the lower levels. I don't see Mutalists a lot in the pro levels, but uh, I know I have a ton of trouble, and I know there's other Protoss who have trouble playing with Mutalists in lower levels because it's really easy for a Zerg player to be aggressive, to be out there with the Mutalist, be flying around, and it's really hard for the Protoss to defend multi-pronged attacks and very fast units. So there you guys go, if you're a Zerg player, hopefully that's a little bit of help, uh, especially if you sort of get stuck in this kind of right if you're in the bronze silver, as my opponent was in silver.